Hello, chat friends, and welcome to Yazar of Chess Channel, and welcome back to our Queen's Gambit client series. So, in this series, we're following this very nice opening from a white's and from black's perspective, and today we're continuing again with our Queen's Gambit client series and the so called semi Tarash defense. The semi Tarash defense we have explained so far in our introduction video and also in our part one video. To, so, this is now our third video of the series. So, please, in order to get a better understanding of this video, check out my previous two videos because uh, in that video we have already explained uh, the most important important strategical and tactical ideas of this opening so if you don't want to miss anything in this video please as i said watch the series from the beginning so introduction video and then part one so today's uh, video will be a little bit more from black's perspective uh, i found really brilliant gameplay by dingler and with the black pieces against shaka and mamajaro back from 2018 in which dingler really played an awesome and outstanding uh semi taraj defense game basically without inaccuracies mistakes or blunders i really liked here uh dingler and approach he never uh, felt i think uh, scared in this particular game he always found good uh, counter-attack opportunities and he applied the most important pawn majority attack principle of the semi tarot defense which i'll explain of course now in the continuation of the video so let's check out now again what the queen's game declined what is then the semi tarot defense and uh, what is this pawn majority idea in this types of structure so here uh shakir mamajarov opened with the move d4 we have knight f6 by ding uh c four and if we move e6 and knight to f3 the game uh first uh transposed into the anti nimt or counter nimt so indian setup because if we move knight to c3 of course bishop to b4 would be the main line would probably lead into nimt so indian defense so here after move e6 knight to f3 by shakri abamajarov counter nimt so indian we have now d5 uh creating of course this very very um uh, dynamic play in the center now the game transposed into the queen's game of the client and after move knight to c3 we have the three knights variation of the queen's game decline now comes the tarash move the semi tarash move which is now the move c5 and i really like uh, the semi tarash defense it's something that i play sometimes not uh, many times but i play sometimes as a surprise element against my opponent and it's uh, as i mentioned before this moves c5 and d5 are always clarification and simplification ideas so that's why i've sorted out the most important principles of the semi tarash defense here i'm repeating again so as i said please watch the series from the beginning because in uh, our introduction video for instance i've explained all of this uh, uh, facts here the simplification ideas and the central call and the, the deep end game strategy ideas so all of these ideas we have explained in our introduction video so uh, first of all i want you to point you out of course in this particular game that like usually of course uh, with the moves c5 and d5 black always gets a clarification in center which is not a bad idea of course in chess uh, to get a clarified center to maybe get an open center to maybe get the locked center to to get maybe maybe get the closed center but what you don't want to uh, get out of this outcome here because we have really pawn collision here what you don't want to get is an isolated pawn so that's why many times uh, here d takes c4 or bishop to c4 for black is not maybe uh, a popular idea because after c takes d4 and e takes d4 okay maybe white can have here now an isolated pawn but it's a long-term plan this is not such a weak isolated, isolated pawn because in the continuation of the game uh here uh, white will find a way to push the pawn on d5 and the position will suddenly explode in the center of the board so that's why uh the outcome here to have an isolated pawn for white is maybe not such a bad part but most of the times uh, after move c5 white will go into this line c takes d5 and the idea about this move is uh after potential e takes d5 to force black to have an isolated pawn because in the long terms of course uh, d takes uh, c5 is of course a good idea because after bishop to c5 now that's black if that has an isolated pawn but i don't think that white will always uh, take this pawn immediately uh, if you have this kind of a structure then of course uh, white will go into these ideas into this normal same uh, part into normal tata structures here and after move uh, g3 and bishop to g uh, to uh, this could lead now into complicated game for both sides but as i said uh, most of the times uh, here after move c takes d5 black should simply recapture with the move knight to d5 and now the fun already starts again we have the simplified line after move e4 we'll explain of course also some different ideas so for white and for black in different sidelines but we're analyzing again this exchange variation because after uh, pardon me sorry let's go back 
nothing went wrong here so after move e4 uh, black plays many time now the move knight to c3 and here after move b takes c3 again black's response should be simply c takes d4 after c takes d4 now we have of course the move bishop to b4 and now uh, black uh, created this very annoying check and the problem for white is that basically you have to cover with the bishop you don't want to cover with the knight uh, because uh, it's obviously a losing game now we can take immediately the knight uh, the pawn here and still we continue with our pressure a check is not something special still we can uh, cover with the move knight to c6 or bishop to d7 so as i said uh covering with the knight is not an option here so that's why white needs to cover with the bishop and here after move bishop to d2 queen to d2 now uh black uh, finds a way to castle very very fast here the king is secured the problem is of course a little bit the lack of development and as i mentioned before uh let's check out now also this very important strategical element uh the game becomes basically a pawn central uh, control versus a queenside pawn majority game which means of course that white has here a dominant position in the center with this two versus one in the center again i'm repeating sorry if i'm repeating myself too much in the series but it's something uh, always uh that we have to consider and we have to notice in these types of structures of course uh black is also here a two versus one pawn majority on the queen side so that's why uh when it comes uh to the middle game stage white has an advantage because white is centralized white has a really a great control of the center of the board but if the game reaches the end game stage i'm pointing out again uh then black is probably better because black can always create here a distant pass pawn so that will be now our subject today to create this distant pass pawn we have talked about this idea so here we have uh, this idea um as a deep endgame strategy under the number three so this deep endgame strategy here of blacks is to trade off more pieces is to go into simplified lines and simply pushing the pawns on the queen side so creating a, this two versus one situation it's actually not such a bad idea because there's nothing better that you can do uh trading off pieces is always a good idea when you play as black you get again a simplified way but here after move casting uh, of course white gains always a better activity with the minor pieces so that's why you have to be careful uh, white will uh, probably try this uh, breakthroughs with the d5 and maybe e5 uh, as a long-term plan we have talked about the central breakthroughs now in our previous video as a strategical element of the semi tatar defense today's subject as i said will be this queen side pawn majority attack here by black so uh here after move uh, bishop to c4 knight to d7 played by ding Liren. we have casting and now b6 of course trying to develop here uh the likes with bishop on b7 rook from a to d1 bishop Bishop to b7 and now rook to e1 you'll see also many many times this types of uh, setups by by white uh, getting this rooks on the d file and the e file the knight is of course very well placed also the bishop is perfectly fine and white has this dominant position in center so as i said our main goal and the only goal that we have here is uh here this two versus one and you see now how ding Liren, uh will play this idea first after move rook to c1 uh, c8 he attacks of course the bishop bishop to b3 we have have rook to e1 uh, rook to e8 uh, getting also his rook centralized we have h3 and now after move knight to f6 we're controlling of course the center of the board we're attacking now immediately what white should never do i think is uh, here to play the game like this because uh, if you do that then bishop to f3 and g takes f3 weakens the pawn structure a little bit and here after move knight to d5 i think all of the positional problems are solved so that's why white has to be careful too in the continuation so that's why many times uh this game leads in, did, into this lines with the move queen to f4 where of course now white has a double protection of the e4 pawn so here after move queen to f4 knight to h5 we have queen to h2 this is still uh, sort of a main line because this position has been reached many many times in chess history nothing wrong with this corner queen because the queen will always find good ways to get into the game nothing wrong to secure the king queen a little bit because you have to protect of course your pawn on e4 here in the continuation we have now h6 by uh ding Luren, and now after move knight to e5 now we have knight to f6 again queen to f4 and now b5 immediately now uh here because of this move knight to e5 and um, we have seen in our previous video in the part one of the series that uh, white can play sometimes sometimes on this central breakthrough but uh, here i think with the move knight to e5 shagrima majarov it 
seems so that he played maybe an active move but actually it's a passive move this move is not doing anything the only way that you can make progress uh with this move knight to e5 is to go into a wild line while playing the maybe the move uh, knight to f7 then of course the game leads into this king to f7 you could maybe play e5 but now a5 anyway we're still relying on our two versus one situation as i said please watch our introduction to the video first because i've explained more and deeper uh the strategical ideas of uh, the same Mitara's defense now that the continuation would be simple a5 and of course okay you can take uh e takes f6 but now after move queen to f6 after potential trades of queens which is uh, as i also mentioned uh previously which is uh here under the number seven trading pieces is a perfect idea here for black because let's see possible continuations now um after potential i don't know queen to f6 uh, maybe e takes f6 king to f6 doesn't matter uh here the game will reach the end game stage in in a couple more moves i think uh, now h4 uh, pardon me a4 b4 b3 as some kind of an idea could lead here into a very good game here for black even bishop to d5 is here a great idea to simplify the game by trading off the bishops because now uh getting use of this two versus one pawn majority is as i said the main goal so that's why uh, the move knight to e5 okay it is some kind of an attack uh, uh, but you have to i think play this uh, wild line with the move knight to f7 in order to make something out of it maybe prepare this move with a different idea so here in the continuation after move uh, queen to f4 we have now b5 as i said we have rook to e3 and now rook to c7 and now knight to d3 so as i mentioned before uh, one of the main ideas uh, of the semi tarash defense can be trading off pieces so how can you do now uh how can you trade now even more pieces as we said the the main goal is simple here for black maybe time for you to pause the video and let's play now in uh, semi tarash fashion how could you maybe here to trade even more pieces at least threaten to trade more pieces because white doesn't like trading pieces in these types of uh, positions black does like it uh, because um, because black wants to go into an endgame uh, and create this distant pass point on the afl so here after move rook to d3 you see we can play sort of a positional pin rook to c3 uh here in the continuation knight to uh, c5 was played by uh Shagrid Bambicharov and okay uh Dingler accept the challenge the he 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 said okay we're trading off more rooks now uh one pair of rooks is off the board after move queen to e3 we have bishop to c6 rook to c1 and now queen to b6 here after move f3 rook to d8 attacking now the weakness here on d4 we have king to f2 so here Shagrid Bambicharov is keeping his pieces uh, very compact here and now of course a5 now it's time to simply push the pawns there's nothing wrong with these ideas it's a deep idea uh here by dingler but that's actually the main idea uh of uh, the semi tarash defense so here g4 we have a4 bishop to c2 knight to d2 knight to d7 trading off more pieces as i said not a not a really wild idea but it's a simple and clarified idea here after move uh, bishop to d3 knight takes c5 rook to c5 we have now b4 and now bishop to c4 uh bishop uh, to d7 and now uh, here a wild move by shagran majaro but actually he wanted to split the pawn chain in front of black king he has to now play active moves here in the continuation we have h takes g5 queen to g5 and now bishop to e8 we have now uh, queen to e7 but now b3 b3 is of course creating now a pass pawn which is now the most important thing because after uh, a takes b3 a3 now played by uh here dingler and this is now really an annoying pawn because in the continuation b4 had to be played in order to stop uh here the progress so that's why here a uh, rook to a8 supporting now the pass pawn we want to get this uh, uh, we want to get this rook uh, pardon me with that want to get this pawn on a2 so that's why here d5 a counter attack by shagman mamajaro and now a2 the problem is now bishop takes a2 leads now again into a complicated game because we can even take here uh, queen to b4 okay d takes e6 is an opportunity but now here after uh, rook to a2 a king to g3 queen to e1 is possible and here uh, black is much much better even after instead of this move d takes e6 if you play bishop to c4 uh to protect your bishop it's not even better because rook to a1 uh leads now into some checkmate threat so that's why uh here again white is simply lost so the pass pawn on 
the A file is simply too much to handle, but that was our main goal in the beginning, in the beginning of the semi tarash defense. That's actually the main strategy of black. So here, after D takes E6, we have now a promotion of the queen. E takes F7, bishop to F7, bishop to F7. We have king to H7 and now queen to H4, but uh, here finally queen to H6 and here um, um, Dingler found a way how to protect his king. Of course, uh, here rook to uh, H5 is a possibility, but now after queen to a7 in this position shakari mamajar resigned maybe uh here ding will do uh, the second queen on h6 but of course then uh still um white is continuing uh, the game with uh, down the whole exchange and of course uh, by uh, white king is also naked so it's uh, simply a completely completely lost game here for for white so a really great game as i said most important strategical elements and strategical ideas of uh the semi tarash defense simplification clarification idea this is, works for black of course uh here we had this central control versus queenside pawn majority we have this deep end game strategy so i see from the beginning black is hoping to get into the into the end game where uh here like with dingler and black can always create this distant pass pawn we had this central attacks ideas you see the uh, shagman major Majaro attacked the center, but uh, the England counterattacked on the queen side. We had center breakthroughs and trading pieces as a strategic lady. I think we had also this element because uh, the England was very happy when he could have uh, traded this pair of rooks after playing rook to c3, then the knight uh, maneuvered to c5, then he traded the rook uh, for the rook on e3. And we had really, I think, the rules of center dynamic positions in which uh, Shakim Majarov played actively in the center, but was a little bit slower because uh, the England's uh, queen side attack was simply much much faster so as i said in order to get a better understanding also of this uh, other ideas please check out my introduction video and also the part one video of our semi tarash defense so okay i hope that you enjoyed this game i really enjoyed it a lot the interesting stuff in the semi tarash uh, if you want to see the whole series here's the link of our whole playlist and if you want to study the whole repertoire of the queen's game decline check out my queen's game decline series in which we have also explained the chicken in defense and also so far to harvest attack so if you like this content of course you can also subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and chess is the best of course